this is Selma Rosnick at the Apartment of Rouge and I'm, this is the channel where I do what I call mini readings which is usually just one poem, either my work or someone else's and I've been doing a lot of work by other people recently because I wanted to get a worldwide feel on the channel and just share the love of poetry from everywhere. Of course I have to read the English versions so if you find something on this channel that you like be sure to go back and check out the, the original language because it's, it's almost impossible to translate poetry, really. Some things will not translate out of its native language. Paul Salon, if that's how you say his name correctly, is a prime example of this, the German poet, because he used a lot of puns, and when you try to translate that from German to English, sometimes you lose some of the wordplay. So, uh... If you find a poem you like, please go back and check it out. And it's it's I, it's that language it was written in. If you're able to do that, but I definitely wanted to share the love today. I wanted to read a poem by Carolyn Forche. She's a, a very well known. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's been a day. I dropped this phone in, in water and it still works. Yay! Because it's getting old and it's giving me problems anyway. When I dropped it in the water, I was like, Oh no! So. <laughs> Anyway, Carolyn Forche, well-known poet, um, lots of awards, probably one of the most well-known living po po poets in America right now, in the United States right now. Um, she likes to write about current affairs, politics, that kind of thing. And her poems can be very thought-provoking. And so, I'm not into politics myself. I like to keep up with what's going on. I am, I'm more into the human interest stories side of it, uh, more so than the whole mess that is politics. But um, yeah, she writes very well. She's actually one of my favorite poets. And so I wanted to share one of her works on here today. This is from her collection, uh, In the Lateness of the World, Carolyn Forche, I think. I think this was published just this year, 2020. So I think it's a brand new collection, which I did not know when I bought it. I was I just wanted a Carolyn Forche collection, and whenever I got it, yeah, Penguin Press, New York, 2020, and I was like, oh, I got her latest collection. So I'm glad that worked out that way. I, I wanted to read a poem first called "Letter to a City Under." Turning the pages of the book you have lent me of your wounded city, reading the braille on its walls, walking beneath ghost chestnuts past fires that turn the bullet-shattered windows bronze, flaring an instant, without warming the fallen houses where you sleep, without water or light, a biscuit tin between you. Or later in the cafe ruins, you discuss all night the burnt literature borrowed from a library where all books met with despair. I wanted to give you, I wanted to give your notes back to you, to be printed in another language, not yours or mine, but a tongue understood by children who make bulletproof vests out of cardboard. We will then lie down in the cemetery where violets grew in your childhood before snipers fired on the city using gravestones for cover. Friend, absent one, I can tell you that your tunnel is still there. Mud walled and hallowed of earth, dug for smuggling oranges into the city, oranges, bright as winter moons by the barrel load. So let's walk further up the street to the hill where one is able to see the city woven in fog, roofs filled with sky, uprooted bridges, and a shop window where a shard of glass hangs over the spine of a book. The library burns on page 60. As it burns in all the newspapers of the world and the clopping of horses' hooves isn't the sound of clopping horses. From here, a dog finds his way through snow with a human bone. And what else? What more? Even the clocks have run out of time. But, my good friend, the tunnel. There is still a tunnel for oranges. And that's all. That would be wild if seeing a dog carrying a human bone. Mm. 
think about the images there for them. That's why she's my favorite poet. It's not so much that she writes about politics, it's her images and the fact that she really makes you think about what she's bringing forward for you to see. She writes about refugee camps and everything. Anyway, I, th I hope you enjoyed that. And please go back and look on the channel for other things. I think there's like a total of, there's almost a, uh, mouth, work for me please. <laughs> there's almost a hundred videos on the channel now. Each one holding a different poem um, by a different poet. Some of them are mine, but most of them are different poems from different poets. So go back and enjoy, okay? And hit subscribe, and remember to hit the little bell next to the subscribe button because I don't film these on a regular schedule for various reasons, my health mostly. And, and 2020 has been real rough with the internet. Ever since the whole world went into quarantine, uh, my internet has been horrible because, you know, more people are online doing things that take up more bandwidth, and the system just wasn't built for that. I've, I've had... Uh, talk to colleagues from all around the world and they're experiencing the same thing <laughs> and so I have I think it, this is only my second video I've put on YouTube this year because of that I usually post more often <laughs> but um, I don't do it on a regular schedule because there's just too many things in my life that get in the way so be sure to hit that notification button so whenever you, I do make a new video you will know <laughs> and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.